Hi, everyone. Uh, it's a great pleasure to uh, be speaking to you today as head of our IT, cybersecurity, and cloud infrastructure organizations at, at Lyle. Uh, Lyle is a, a T-cell reprogramming company uh, dedicated to the mastery of, of T-cells in order to cure patients with solid tumor. Uh, and our goal is a curative therapy for any solid tumor. Our audacious goal of, of curing solid tumor cancer includes uh, developing a deep understanding of the human immune cells, uh, really in order to reprogram them uh, so that they can target and ultimately eradicate solid tumor cells. Uh, currently, autogalous T cells can eradicate advanced and refactory cancer, but it really can't do it that consistently. Uh, and so Lyle's goal is to make it a, a reliable, predictably effective, and widely applicable um, uh, therapy for any patient. Um, we're using our, our technology platforms to develop a multimodality product pipeline uh, and believe that our T-cell reprogramming platforms uh, really can be directed at, at any cancer. So a little bit about solid tumors. Uh, we've made significant progress against hematological cancers such as leukemia and lymphoma, but that really only represents about 10% of the cancer indications. Uh, and so Lyle is really focused on uh, the other 90% of, of cancers to, to meet that unmet need for uh, oncology and, and our patients. So a couple of facts about Lyle. Uh, we were founded in 2018. We were headquartered in South San Francisco, California. Uh, we have got additional labs in Seattle and uh, a really state-of-the-art all digital manufacturing facility in Bothell, Washington. Uh, we've got a diverse product pipeline. Uh, so we've got two INDs cleared. Uh, two more INDs are expected this year and early in 2023. Our next gen cell reprogramming technologies are designed really to attack the, the barriers that limit uh, consistent and reliable curative responses um, from our T cells. Uh, and Lyle has, has full integration from uh, discovery, early stage and late stage research, all the way through process development, uh, manufacturing, and of course, clinical. So for those that you don't know, cell therapy is, is really personalized medicine. We're really starting with uh, the patient's uh, immune system or T cells. Uh, the first thing that we do is collect the patient's T cells. Uh, we isolate and activate those cells. Uh, we bring them in and uh, engineer or reprogram those cells, and then ultimately grow and expand the number of cells so that we can infuse them back into the patient. And, and as you would expect, uh, the value chain there, the, the manufacturing process is, is quite complex. Um, we start with enrollment, enrolling patients and scheduling patients based on uh, manufacturing ca capacity. Uh, we then uh, aphorese that, that patient. Uh, we transport those cells. We, we receive those cells into our manufacturing facility. Uh, we, we reprogram those cells. We, we activate, reprogram, and expand those cells. Uh, and then ultimately, we need to um, create a drug product that is of, of sufficient quality to, to ship back to the patient and ultimately infuse them. Uh, and then lastly, we, we, we monitor that patient uh, throughout uh, their journey. Uh, and this requires a number of, of um, digital systems to support these processes. So um, one of the first key systems is our cell tracking system. Uh, this system uh, maintains the chain of identity and a chain of custody for those cells. Um, it creates the labels, it creates the shipping bills, and it, it deals with the, the patient scheduling. On the back side of the process, um, it, it, it tracks and schedules patient infusion and confirms the infusion receipt. Um, we then have our, our enterprise resource planning uh, um, software. Uh, that software is responsible for things like material uh, resource planning and production planning, order management, tracking materials. And then lastly, our, our MES, our manufacturing execution system, which is responsible for um, our electronic back, batch records, uh, process workflows, um, the ability to track the materials throughout the manufacturing uh, process and status uh, and execute our manufacturing work orders. Uh, layering on top of that, uh, we've got a, a number of other systems. So for example, our lab information system is responsible for uh, managing samples, um, our building management system, for uh, doing things like uh, managing things like our air handlers and, and monitoring those air handlers. Um, we've got our quality management system that deals with things like training and, and exceptions. All of these systems have to have uh, access control. And then we have our analytics control tower, which is really built uh, around these systems so that we can uh, interrogate these systems uh, and uh, uh, really take the data that's being generated from these systems, generating insights.
Um, uh, all of these systems ultimately need to speak to one another. So we have an integration platform, uh, which is uh, what we call our AIP. And, and that integration platform is really the glue between all of these systems. So as we look at compliance, um, there are a number of challenges. Compliance doesn't come for free. Um, normally there are people costs um, in terms of effort. There is time um, in terms of being able to um, uh, execute and generate all of the documentation uh, and evidence required. Uh, and this all impacts um, our ability to be agile. Uh, and as a science-based company, you know, one of the things that we can absolutely guarantee is that through our research and through our clinical trials, we'll be um, gaining more information, gaining more knowledge, and we'll need to be able to learn and adapt. And so we took a step back and said, well, how do we overcome some of these challenges? And so um, we, we sort of set out uh, on this journey, taking you know, an approach both from a business and a technical perspective. On the business side, we've really set out to improve our, client, uh, our compliance um, through some additional operational visibility, giving us more visibility into the environment, into the application, into the configuration of that application. Um, we wanted to make sure that we had uh, additional consistency um, around the, the development, the deployment, and the testing processes. And we, um, as you'll learn about later in the, the discussion, uh, have done that through investments in automation. Uh, we wanted to reduce the cost of ownership for managing compliance, again, through, through automation. Uh, and lastly, we wanted to be able to maintain a continuous validated state. We wanted to make sure that we were always in a place where we were inspection ready. On the technical side, uh, we've really looked for a few outcomes. One is a comprehensive cloud uh, asset inventory and, and control system so that we know exactly what assets are out there in the cloud. Uh, we wanted to make sure that um, all of our change management processes were as, as defect free as, as possible. Uh, and of course, we want improved traceability, uh, documentation, uh, and deployments. So taking a step back, Lyle started as a cloud-first company. Um, many of our applications, the majority of our applications run in the cloud. Uh, and so we have a, a talented group of IT professionals and software engineers. We have a pretty um, well-rounded well and mature uh, software development uh, process. And so as we looked at some of the requirements around GXP, uh, we sort of scratched our head and said, well, a lot of the, the, the work that GXP and validation is, is trying to accomplish, we already accomplish in our environment through our software development lifecycle. And so we embarked on a, a, an exercise to map our software development lifecycle to the GXP system controls. And, and as you can see, you know, in areas of traceability and security and areas of encryption and data retention, Lyle had, had already been doing these things. Um, we have monitors and alarms and logging and logs. We have snapshots and versioning to, to help facilitate backups and recovery. We have a data lifecycle and an archival process. Um, on the security side, we already manage authentication and authorization. We already manage encryption uh, in transit and, and rest. So uh, one of the things that we, we then did next was we said, well, all of the questions that we continually ask ourselves in this software development lifecycle um, and all of the artifacts that are produced out of that software development lifecycle, uh, can we integrate them with, with a quality plan uh, that meets the GXP um, um, specifications? And so as we, as we build software, we always ask ourselves, how do we define what we're building? And that usually is um, a, a plan. Um, and in the quality space, that's a quality plan. Um, we ask ourselves, how do we manage changes safely? Um, and so that's a, a set of specifications. Um, how do we reliably and repeatedly, repeatedly deploy to various environments? So as we think about our deployment, how do we, how do we ensure that it, it's repeatable, that what we, we deployed in test is the same as what ends up in production? Um, how do we test and make sure that what we built is what we intended to build? Um, those are our tests that we already run in the software development lifecycle. Um, and in the, the quality uh, world, these are IQ and OQ, they're installation qualification reports and operational qualification reports. Um, so can we use those tests as credit um, and evidence uh, for an inspector or an auditor? And then again, how do we maintain the compliance state with all of these new changes? How do we make sure that um, our production uh, environment, for example, is always in a, a validated state. One of the uh, 
other things that we wanted to accomplish here is we wanted to take full advantage of the cloud. So as we, we think about the cloud, um, there are a lot of opportunities that the cloud provides that uh, aren't otherwise afforded to us on bare metal application installs. And one of those things is, is defining um, our infrastructure, our compute, our networking, our storage as code. And that code ends up in a version management system uh, and, and allows us to um, assert a, the state uh, in which the, the environment is in. So I can always look in our source code repository and say, that is a declarative statement as to what uh, production should reflect. Um, I can also tell what changes were made, uh, when they were made, who they were made by. Um, and I can also show differences between different states, if you will, or different environments. Uh, the next thing that we wanted to take advantage of is the, the fault tolerance of, of the cloud. Um, and so everything that we build is, is built and codified um, using fault tolerant strategies, whether it's our network or our security, um, our computer, our storage, that's all done through with fault, fault tolerance. So, um, you know, the days of somebody accidentally unplugging a cable and bringing the system down, um, we have resilient systems that, that, uh, um, um, that do not allow that. Um, we wanted to make sure that um, our deployments were consistent, that they were audible, that they were con controllable. Uh, and this means that at Lyle, all manual deployments are dead. We do nothing manual. Everything is, is done through automation, which means that um, the same automation used to deploy the infrastructure as code into development is the, the automation that we use to get it into test, to vow, and then to production. Uh, and so, um, you know, I think we've probably all lived where, you know, somebody says, well, it worked in dev and I'm not sure why it doesn't work in production. We don't have those problems because again, we, we're using automation to, to promote the code. And then the last uh, opportunity is really around test automation. So we can write tests that assert that what we, we specified is actually what exists in, in the environment. Uh, here's an example of an automated IQ report. Um, this is a 227 page report uh, with 284 tests that have been run. Looks like they've all been uh, successful, which is good. Uh, and this, this report uh, is um, ultimately used as our artifact, our installation qualification report that would be used in, in, in an inspection. Um, this report takes minutes to run uh, and that's really game changing for us. This, this used to take weeks of manual effort um, and now we can do it in minutes. So the report is, is uh, being executed at multiple phases throughout our software development lifecycle. Um, we make sure that uh, the code is performing as we designed it. Um, the tests are totally automated. They're triggered either when we submit code into our source code repository or during a deployment. We can also run the, the report um, in an ad hoc way um, so that, again, we can assert that we're uh, in a continual state of uh, compliance. Um, and um, it validates uh, a set of predefined configuration uh, and make sure that what's in the environment is what we expect to be in the environment. So, you know, really the value here is a, a reduction in manual effort that was uh, really required in um, developing all of the documentation and manual execution of, of all of these tests. Um, we also, um, I think, you know, have been able to more repeatably and more reliably um, roll software and software changes out to the environment. Um, we've seen a radical reduction in time from weeks to, to minutes. Um, and this has all allowed us to um, achieve our agility targets, to be able to make small changes to the environment at, at a relatively low cost. So um, there's been a many, many, you know, um, keys to, to the success of, of this program. Um, I think our partnership with AWS, um, the, the expertise that they bring to the table um, and the, um, the services that uh, we ultimately run our application on has been tremendous and we couldn't, we couldn't get here without, without them. But I, I wanna call out specifically that, you know, in taking on this endeavor, it can't just be technology and it can't just be people. It really has to be a partnership uh, between the technology teams and the quality teams. And so um, we, we partnered very early on at the, at the ground floor with our colleagues in quality, quality and that's been extremely rewarding uh, and, and absolutely fundamental to the success of uh, achieving the vision here of leveraging, obviously, the strengths of the cloud, 
uh, and re reducing the burden of cost in terms of validation. Um, and you know, and we've all seen the the um, the pay big payoff, which is um, increasing our velocity of making changes safely. So I'll channel I'll, I'll channel Danielle Gallet, our VP of Quality at, at Lyle. Uh, Danielle says the collaboration with our information sciences team and AWS has allowed us to validate GXP applications running in AWS in a fully automated fashion that meets or exceeds our quality standards while allowing for change and continuous innovation. The team's ability to develop a validation strategy, automate the deployment of the infrastructure, the rapid IQ report in such a short period of time allows us to meet our goals of having AWS infrastructure validated before Lyle's first patient serve. So what's next? Um, I, I think, you know, as we look at the, um, the infrastructure and uh, the application, we've really broken this down into four different layers. The first layer is really the, the, the plant. It's the, the data center and the ping and the power uh, and, and the cooling that Amazon provides. And uh, we, we leave that to Amazon. Um, Amazon is able to um, assert from a quality perspective um, that they are managing that and, and reducing risk in an appropriate way um, through things like their SOC 1 and SOC 2 reports. Um, the bulk of our effort has been on layer 2 and 3. Um, some of that uh, infrastructure we call platform infrastructure. That platform infrastructure is reusable from application to application. Um, so um, a lot of the testing, that IQ report that you saw, um, some of that is, is absolutely lift and shift for um, you know, application A versus application B. And then there is application specific infrastructure. Um, and, and of course we invest in that per application, um, both from a, a, an infrastructure development perspective, but also from an automation uh, and testing perspective. So we're, we're gonna focus our, our, our time and energy now that we've got you know, sort of the rapid IQ report underneath our belt and all of that automation um, is, is on the application. Uh, and so building testing frameworks and harnesses around the application so that we can do very similar um, um, test automation for the application is, is where we're moving next. So with that, I'd, I'd like to thank everyone. Um, I know there's a lot of details here and I, I'd certainly be happy to um, field any, any questions. Uh, you can always reach me at uh, astein at lyle.com or on LinkedIn. Thank you so much.